Hi again, Movie Watchers, here we are in one of the final videos in the marathon, and I wanted to wait to get some more films watched during that time to make this list. There are still plenty of directors whose filmographies I still need to explore more, and some I haven't even started on. There are simply so many movies out there. My love and appreciation for Asian cinema has increased over the past year, and the following filmmakers are the reason for this. There will be a few honourable mentions simply because it's so hard to narrow down to five, however the reason I've done this is because there's only a handful of directors whose films I've seen three or more of. Here are my top five Japanese directors. Number 5, Kenji Mizoguchi. This classic director was known for the social commentary and powerful statements commenting upon Japan and its traditions. From the films I have seen, Mizoguchi tells powerful and quite bleak stories that are hard to watch. Sancho the Bailiff, forward slash Sancho Dayu, is a heart-wrenching film about poverty, slavery and being separated from one's parents at a young age. The Life of Oharu is a harrowing story of a woman's life of mistreatment and objectification. His style involves using long takes and very dark mise-en-scene, which has given him credit as a great filmmaker. He had dozens of films during the 70s and the 30s, with over 90 directed in total. He is one of the Japanese masters who I look forward to exploring the work of further. Number 4, Hirokazu Karida. I feel Hirokazu Karida is one of the most promising directors we have in film today. He shows influence from director Yasujiro Ozu, with some of his films focusing on family relationships and also sharing a meditative pace. The stories Karida tells are tender, emotional and often hard-hitting, and nobody knows we are told a devastating story about child abandonment. In Still Walking, we are brought into a family's way of life and learn about them through long scenes of them talking. He often finds time for naturalistic humour, which also reminded me of Ozu films, and it always feels right. His characters always feel real, and his shooting style is beautiful, and it's almost like a documentary. Karida has made 15 films to date, and will surely make many more great films. Coming in at number 3 is Hayao Miyazaki. How could I possibly not put him in this list? Hayao Miyazaki is honestly one of the most creative contributors, not just to the art of animation, but to cinema itself. He is an absolute genius. While all his films are animated fantasy stories, some border into the action genre such as Princess Mononoke. His films are primarily for children, but their universal reach in terms of age and country shows that animation can also appeal to adults. His style is beautiful and you can see a real detail in every frame of animation. From the backdrops to character costumes, it shows true talent and imagination. Miyazaki takes you on magical journeys and adventures that you won't forget. It is sad to think he is now finally retiring, but the man has certainly left a legacy. He has a large influence on everyone in the animation industry, and especially Pixar founder and director John Lasseter, who is possibly his biggest fan ever. Miyazaki started as a small time animator for a TV show in the 1960s, and it was in the late 1970s when he made his fantastic debut as a director with The Castle of Cagliostro. Films such as My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away, and many others are in my favourite films of all time, and not just animated ones. His acclaim as an animation director is well deserved and he should be recognised as one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Number 2, Masaki Kobayashi. With a film trilogy like The Human Condition under his belt, it is impossible for this director not to be on this list. Sharing some influence from other Japanese directors like Kurosawa, his films use camera and music to their fullest potential. In some ways his work is ahead of its time and the previously mentioned film was a prime example of this. Kobayashi had started as an apprentice director, but this was interrupted when he was drafted into the army and sent to Manchuria. Being a pacifist, he did not want to surpass the rank of private, and had also been a prisoner of war for some time. This experience in his life certainly explains the raw energy and realism of his epic trilogy. Kobayashi's films have been known for their criticism of Japanese history and tradition. In Samurai Rebellion, it is about the excessive control the lords have, and in The Human Condition, we are seeing a film tackle the subject of war, madness, and daggers of power. The quality of the cinematography in his films is overwhelming. There are great tracking shots and close-ups that come to mind, as they are just so well composed. He really brings out the drama and emotion through the camera, music, and flow of the story. Simply a fantastic filmmaker, whose films are powerfully human and political. And before I reach my number one choice, I'd just like to give some honourable mentions to the following filmmakers. They definitely deserve to sit along with the cinematic masters. Here they are in a little quick montage. Thank <laughs> you. 
Number 1, Akira Kurosawa. I think for people who have seen my previous videos, such as my all-time top directors, won't be surprised to see him come into my number one spot. He is easily one of the greatest contributors to cinema. Kurosawa's father had previously been a member in the samurai family, which is ironic to see the films Kurosawa would later go on to make. Kurosawa had actually started out as a painter, with his brother Haigo having been a silent film narrator. It was in the mid-1930s when Kurosawa had started as an assistant director after impressing a director who insisted the studio employed him. By 1950, when Rush Oman gained international success, he was already considered as the best Japanese film director of all time. With worldwide acclaim, several awards and honours, and a strong following even today, his international influence as an artist is hard to rival. Directors like George Lucas and Steven Spielberg and many Japanese directors have drawn influence from this great diverse filmmaker. He has made samurai films, detective thrillers, family dramas, a war period film, and films like Rashomon that are hard to even define in a single genre. When comparing Ikiru to Ran, it is hard to think it is all by the same director. The way he uses the camera, stages his scenes and edits it all together are just brilliant. Craft goes into where actors stand, how the camera pans, what angle it's at, and how every scene is specially lit and decorated. Most great filmmakers take care of all these areas, but Kurosawa's style is unique and just fantastic. His achievement in filmmaking still surprises audiences today, like myself, and will continue to inspire other young filmmakers and enthusiasts. Akira Kurosawa is a legend and I love his films, which is why he is at this point my absolute favourite Japanese director and director full stop. His films are timeless, and he is a true visionary and master. Thank you everybody for staying to watch this video and I hope you liked the choices that I had in the films that you saw kind of mentioned. Um, I would love to hear if you have any favourite directors who did not appear on the list because I would love to start a discussion and kind of learn about new uh, Japanese directors. So I hope you've enjoyed the marathon and stay tuned to a wrap up video. So all I can say now is mite itadakia arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for watching.